So is it better? Okay. Thank you all for coming this early in the morning. It's really nice to see so many people here. I will be talking about uh, network management uh, in Linux, uh, which uh, for us is just network manager because uh, currently there's, uh, there's no other possibility that we would even think about. We have quite a few network manager developers here. So Dan Williams somewhere, yes. Dan Winship and that's, that's all. You will have the possibility to ask uh, any questions at the end of uh, this presentation, but uh, you can also ask during the time if it's related to something uh, I'm talking about. But actually, uh, I decided to ask my questions first. <laughs> so my question is whether you would like to use Network Manager on servers or not. So is there anyone who would? Any more people who would? Uh, yes, that's the next question. What if we fix it? What if it works for you? Yeah, that's much better now. Okay, okay. We already started actually. We already have some results. And you can try these results as the part of uh, the Network Manager release 098, which was released some two or three days ago. I, I don't know what's the day today, actually. So, uh, yeah, there's some time difference. So actually, it was it was released on the, the 20th because it was released in, in the US but it was already 21st in Brno. So the next question is, why actually would you like to use Network Manager? Uh, what are the things that, that appeal you and what are the things that, that make you uh, consider it? Is there anyone who would help me to answer? Yes? Okay, stable API for network changes, network configuration. So that's, that's something uh, we are really trying to deliver. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Anything else? Yeah, I have some answers for myself, so don't worry. If I get no other help from you, I'll just go on to Okay, the, con the configuration of bridges. Uh, do you mean the dependencies between the devices or what's, what's the problem there? Thank you. So more complicated configurations consisted of uh, lots of virtual and physical devices. It's, uh, it's something uh, we, we are working on too, yes, yes. Okay, let's go for my set of answers. Uh, it's a little bit, a little bit more talking, so uh, we still uh, support uh, the desktops and laptops, which is, which is uh, where Network Manager came from. We want to continue doing so, so you should not uh, worry about uh, your, your connectivity on laptops. Uh, and we are moving slowly to also support servers and virtualization much better. You can already use Network Manager on servers. You, you can already uh, build virtualization solutions on top of it. You can slowly start working on virtualization uh, network backends uh, 
on top of what Network Manager currently provides. We sort of target also embedded stuff, but that's that's not uh, that's not so much important. But uh, one of one of those use cases is in a drama FS, which uh, which actually is. So we would like to make it make it easy to uh, work with Network Manager from the booting until you're shutting down the computer, or if you're not shutting it down at all, it's it's also okay. Actually, the best uh, the best you can do with Network Manager is uh, to work with uh, systems that are not specifically servers or specifically laptops or something. Like development machines, you often want to have your virtualization set up, you often want to have uh, some, uh, some server software on it, but at the same time it's a laptop and you're moving it uh, from network to network, you're connecting, connecting it to Wi-Fi, so it's not just a server, it's not just a virtualization machine, but it's, it's everything at, uh, at once. What we can, uh, what we provide uh, for you is uh, the Dbus API, which maybe you like, maybe you don't. There will be some some changes in the API itself, but currently we are going to stick with Dbus. We are providing a library, so if you if you don't really like working with Dbus, or it's it's actually the preferable way to to contact Network Manager from other programs, from other applications. And in the future, we are going to provide uh, more possibilities of configuration. You will have uh, different, uh, different types of configuration which will be runtime and permanent with some API to store the runtime configuration to the permanent and so on. This is what's, what's uh, quite uh, usual in the networking world. But uh, as you know, we come originally from the desktop world, so this, this was uh, not necessary in the past. There are some, some, there are some things that we really want to make better, and it's uh, independent configuration of uh, various network devices. Yeah, I will be talking about it when comparing Network Manager to uh, other alternatives, if there are some at all. And you will see that this is this is something uh, you might even want on on some servers and on some some uh, machines in the data centers. Yeah, I might use the presenter actually. <laughs> I'm not used to it, so. So uh, uh, the inner workings are a little bit different from maybe what are what you're used to already, because uh, network manager is trying to gather all the information first and act upon it next, so it can do some policy decisions, which are currently uh, set up internally, but there will be some more configuration options uh, in in the future. So the first step is uh, to actually get uh, information from the administrator, from the configuration files. The next step is to use uh, any dynamic protocols that are allowed to be used to, uh, to gather more information like addresses, routes, and so on. And only when we have all the information, we want to do some policy decisions. So we know what network manager will, will want to configure next, and then do the configuration. So this is a model that that works pretty well for us, yeah, including stuff like uh, split DNS, because this way you can gather uh, DNS information for various networks you're connecting to. For example, um, I'm using it in a way that I'm at home uh, with my default routing interface uh, going directly to the internet, but uh, resources are on the VPN, so I need to access uh, some resources over the VPN. This is all about DNS, because you want to, not only routing, but also all the DNS queries should go the right direction. 
imagined you would need more VPNs, which is currently not, not supported, but uh, it's, it's perfectly possible. So, do we have any alternatives? Uh, what are we using today? I'm trying to uh, take it from the worst ones, actually. Yeah, no, I'm not looking at uh, at any uh, init script maintainers, not at all. So, what we have here is uh, some uh, some uh, scripting solutions. There are multiple of them. Uh, you can even write your custom scripts. You don't even have to have configuration written uh, per interface. You can have it all in one script like uh, like you probably sometimes do with IP tables. Yeah. So what is the problem with these solutions? If you're not running any daemon, again, I'm saying if you, if you are not running any daemon, that means you're only doing static configuration. Yeah, so itself, it cannot provide you with uh, DHCP and stuff. Uh, are you asking about uh, configuration formats or? Yeah, yeah, I, I'll try to, try to rephrase. Uh, Thomas is asking whether we are going to replace all the configuration stuff with, with something else or, or if we are going to stay compatible. Uh, I, I can't really uh, talk about the distant future, but in the near future, we definitely are going to support uh, the old configuration files, at least, at least for Fedora and Red Hat. But uh, there are some if up down if net, you know. Uh, we don't really have people to support the the other distribution configuration. But for Fedora, it will be still supported. Yes, yes. Uh, it's it's difficult to uh, get people use using something uh, entirely new and and go away from their their previous ways. Yeah. Um, if if anybody has uh, has anything to add to Thomas's question, I have no problem in having some discussion. I actually made my slides a little bit shorter so we so we can afford some discussions. So if, if there's anyone who would like to help us. Yes, actually currently uh, all configuration can be done through dbus, so it's possible to build uh, any type of tools over it. And we ourselves are building uh, the, the CLI that will allow you to add new connections and stuff. That's that, that will be possible. And in the, in the future, uh, you will also have the possibility to choose whether it's just runtime configuration or whether it should be stored in the configuration files. So actually, uh, the best way to work with configuration files from tools, not by hand, is to use the API. Because just in case something may change in the future with the configuration files, we can, uh, we can uh, go for another configuration format if it's necessary. Uh, these, are, these are things that, that uh, cannot really anticipate now but if you stick to the dbus api it's uh, it's uh, better documented and it's uh, it's uh, the primary way to do the configuration from other tools
Yes, it's it's good to have a command line tool, and I will be talking about that one later. Thank you very much. So, uh, uh, most of you probably know that uh, when I say that you can't do DHCP with init scripts, that you are actually doing it. So, what I told was that you can't do it without running a daemon. So, there's still the DHCP daemon running, and it depends on, on what you allow it to do. So, for me, the DHCP client is something that asks for the information. So, this is, this is what we are using still. For many people, the ACP clients is the actual configurators. So it's the actual tool that configures uh, the kernel. So this is something we are we are avoiding, and we want to avoid it in as as many situations as possible, not only the ACP. Okay. Uh, that means um, we really really want to have these small tools to communicate to network manager and give us the information we need, and Network Manager will be acting in, in, in this uh, area as uh, the policy decision making place. So we gather all the information, we can run the ACP clients for each interface, we can gather the information, but we can then still decide to do something specific according to the information. Uh, the other problem of uh, the, the network scripts is that you usually want to run just one daemon from the network scripts, or at least just one daemon for one, uh, one interface. And now that you have uh, IPv4 and IPv6, it's uh, virtually impossible, unless you have a tool that will be do both protocols at the same time. But that's actually running a network daemon for every interface. And we want to be running a network daemon for the computer, for the server, for the node, laptop, it doesn't matter. And then we have the type of solution we actually prefer, the network configuration daemon that runs just, just once, uh, can manage uh, your connections. And there is a couple of them, but actually I, I looked at all of them and none can be currently a match for network manager uh, regarding the features. Sometimes maybe we can talk about stability or something. Yeah, uh, but uh, that is that is something uh, for our team to, to work on. Currently, there's only one other configuration daemon that I believe has some some real use cases, and it's the NetFD from OpenWRT people but it's specifically targeted at uh, only uh, embedded devices and mostly for routers. So the use cases are quite quite uh, different from what we do with Network Manager. They are uh, not focusing on virtualization. They are not, uh, not counting or not expecting to work on the laptops. And remember that what we want to have is just one configuration API with one one configuration tool under it, and not to choose it uh, whether we are using laptops or desktops or something else. So I already uh, spoke about some of the features actually, but let's uh, go for a uh, for a summary of uh, what you can expect currently. We support uh, quite a number of uh, device types. Uh, we support wireless and wired and wireless at Ethernet. We support various uh, various types of mobile connections, ADSL connections, uh, mobile connections over Bluetooth, and so on. But uh, probably now, what what you might be more interested in is uh, the virtual devices because it's it's quite something we lacked in, in the past. So with, with the new release we have, we support bridges. We fixed lots of uh, bonding problems, so you can actually use it now. We want you to also use bridges, so, so 
uh, really the problems are related. They are usually the same for bridges and bonds. Uh, we have VLAN interfaces, and in the future we are going to integrate the team driver. And the last thing uh, is uh, the VPN interface, because we don't want to implement all the VPN stuff in Network Manager, so we use plugins. And there is already a number of plugins for va various VPN software. Uh, the plugins usually call uh, called the the other projects, uh, the other programs. So it's not like uh, re reinventing stuff. It's uh, it's more like integration. We had some issues with uh, uh, dependencies between the devices. And it's pretty much solved now for bridges and bonds. Uh, we have some some uh, minor issues with mobile broadband and uh, some issues with VPNs. We are still working on it. Uh, we have sometimes uh, sometimes uh, even some some disagreements of how how it should work. So it's not only the coding work; it's also the the organization work and the discussions about about what can be done. For example, the, the VPN stuff is currently handled in a way uh, that uh, you can have your physical connections configured and you can, you can uh, bind a VPN to your physical connection. So actually, if, you, if you're going online with this connection, you're getting the VPN too, or you're not getting anything. So it's, it's uh, even it's more secure because you really want to use the VPN for some, for some use cases. So this is this is what it what it did for you. It sometimes looks like uh, address configuration is easy, but it's uh, it's uh, often one of the toughest parts uh, because of all the auto configuration. I often hear uh, questions or remarks in my talks that uh, people don't need auto configuration at all on servers. Uh, but tell me, not whether you want it on servers, but whether you actually use it sometimes. Who of you sometimes uses, for example, DHCP on a server? Yeah, already quite a lot of people. So I, I, I got this, this remark and question on every talk, so I, I thought I might be talking about it by myself. After the DHCP stuff, which is usually DHCP for IPv4, you will also want to consider IPv6 support. At least sometimes, sometimes you have to. So that is uh, even even more complicated. There are even more dependencies between the configuration protocols because with the DHCP version four, you just use the DHCP, and when it's uh, when it's uh, done configure the, the interfaces. Uh, with IPv6, you need to wait for router advertisements. Then, uh, according to the data from the router advertisements, uh, you decide, or the network manager decides, whether the ACP is run or not. So this is, this is quite, quite something we have to work on. And the kernel auto configuration sort of works for very simple use cases. Like if you have a device uh, that uh, has just one network interface, it's perfectly okay. But for example, for your laptops, it's uh, I in its current state, it, it's not usable because uh, you want to have auto configuration for your Ethernet, for example, or for your Wi-Fi. But then you connect to a VPN, so that means you need uh, something in this case, network manager, to make the policy decision to actually set the default route to the VPN and not uh, to the Wi-Fi, for example. Yeah, you, you may want to have it the other way around, so, so the policy decision must, must be done in the Network Manager, but currently the kernel just does it. So that's, that's something we are, we are stu still considering changing the kernel code to actually provide the API, but we are also considering uh, using a user space tool for that and turn off uh, the, the kernel auto configuration code. It's, it's just two possibilities.
Regarding uh, the integration with uh, initramfs, uh, it was just a few, uh, a few things we wanted to consider. And it's uh, whether we have some, uh, some uh, really stupid, really excessive dependencies or not. And we realized that we do not. So uh, it's uh, not so big. Yes, there is still still uh, possibility of improvement, but uh, it's 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 not such a big deal. And we have already some uh, some parts of Network Manager as uh, as dynamically loaded modules, so you can already uh, miss out some parts that that you would you, you would otherwise use. We are uh, dropping the Dbus daemon requirement. So in the initramfs or even on the servers, you can uh, you can then use uh, libdbus connecting to a private socket. So the protocol will stay the same, but the, the dependency on uh, the actual daemon uh, will be gone. And this is what everybody wants to know about. It's is the CLI, and all the time I, I am saying that the CLI is not only uh, upon our team because we need to know the requirements we need to do requ we need to know the requirements of the community we need to, to know the requirements of the enterprise so all of you can help us with that there's no coding needed we will do that but what we need is uh, to have some information of what what uh, you would like to use, what is uh, wrong according to you, and we are trying to work, work on it now. Uh, Jiří Klimeš, who's mostly working on the CLI, is uh, not here, uh, but uh, he's currently maintaining his own branch uh, for, for the new changes, and I looked at, at his uh, modifications and they are pretty good, so if anyone wants to discuss later, there's no time for it here. Uh, I can discuss with you what what you already have. Yes. Uh, we actually uh, are going to merge it to to the main line and release it at some point of time, but maybe we could make some builds if if uh, it's requested. Yes. Thank you, thank you. That's a good suggestion. You know, it's a li little bit hard to speak here as I have my uh, my boss in the audi audience. So, <laughs> yeah. So I'm all the time thinking about he'll be, he'll be like this. What I what I say or not? <laughs> Okay, so uh, the CLI is really uh, under some redesign or reconstruction. We are really trying, so yes, we will communicate to you. We will try to, to do our best. And the actual features, I'm not now talking about how it looks like and how it's uh, about the usability. The actual features uh, we are going to deliver is uh, connection creations. So what so far you would have to do via configuration files or via dbus, you will have the possibility to add connections via uh, the CLI, which is, I think, pretty important. We have some, uh, some notion of uh, guided configuration interface for uh, the people that want to, to have it easier. I haven't seen that yet, so I can't, can't really uh, give you any information, but there's, there's already some code. And what we already have in, in the release is uh, some wireless support, so we have wireless scanning, and uh, the release also includes, or I think it's from the from the previous release actually. Uh, yes, then then it's confirming it. We have support for adding wireless connections for connecting to wireless. So we have we have this this part already done. Yes. Uh, I actually 
Yeah, I actually uh, will have a meeting with uh, uh, Radek Novacek. Yes, I talked to him yesterday and we are going to meet together and, and speak about what can be done for, for each other. So it's... it's What I really would like to, to do with, uh, with, uh, with the open AI people is to uh, revise uh, the, the whole model of the configuration, whether it's, it's similar, whether it's, it, it has some differences, whether they are uh, good or not. So, so this is something not yet uh, available for any, any discussion or information yet. So there's there are some things that uh, you will not not often see and you will not often be even interested in, but we are doing a lot of work on improving the code so that in future we can deliver the features uh, in in a better way. That means faster and they would be more reliable. So for us this is pretty important, but it's not it's not seen from the outside of the project. We are also trying to cooperate uh, better with other distributions and to invite more contributors because there is a lot of, lot of things that people want in the product manager, but we don't have time to do that. Partly because we are working on all these enterprise features, so if we have contributors for like, uh, like some uh, advanced uh, desktop -y stuff, it's, it's uh, always good. And there's something quite uh, quite new what I'm I've been working on, on for some time, and it's uh, the testing because we want to have some test suites for the core network manager behavior. Uh, al already, there's part of the work is done. So currently, uh, most of the things that I can do with the tests. Uh, will not uncover many bugs in Network Manager, but we found bugs in Kernel and, and other places. But the next step will be uh, to actually use a layer uh, uh, under Network Manager to provide Network Manager with fake uh, interfaces and fake, uh, fake real configuration. And this will be used to check uh, uh, the correctness of, of the internal workings of Network Manager. And also, we are considering uh, the LNST project, which is the Linux Network Stack uh, Testing. I never remember what uh, the abbreviation means. And uh, there was actually a talk yesterday about this technology. So we are, we are really working. All right. Yeah, alwa always when someone shows me this uh, 10 minutes left, I, I, I got confused for a while, so just for, forgive me. <laughs> so this is like two types of tests, uh, three types of tests, uh, of, of which uh, two types uh, really go deep into Network Manager, because the third one is testing with the real configurations and, and uh, l real or almost real hardware and you might uh, ask why I have uh, like two such uh, two such uh, similar things but uh, the actual testing with the platform stuff will show us uh, exactly what's going in in the network manager so this is uh, very important for us as developers as we can check the tiny small bits of, of the behavior and uh, the LNST tests uh, would uh, help us to check uh, the results. Whether it, it, works, uh, it works completely with all uh, the dependencies and so on. So the last, uh, last big part of my presentation, which will be maybe, I, I will make it a little bit quicker because I, I'm talking too long. It's a uh, network manager in various distributions. Uh, 
uh, network manager in Fedora is quite easy to do because we are all working on it, uh, even in even with the distribution. We are still supporting the IFCFG style configuration, and we will be doing so probably for a long time. And we are still working on some integration issues, but uh, I think we'll have some some meetings with other other teams, so it will be hopefully better. We have quite a number of contributions from Debian and Ubuntu, and you never know whether whether these people use Debian or Ubuntu because they are using a Debian on servers, and often often they won't they won't use it on laptops and so on. So this is really really notable because uh, it's it's uh, the biggest uh, contribution from outside uh, the Fedora and Red Hat world. We have some contrib contributions from SUSE, and they have their own IFCFG plugin. So I, I wonder whether whether we really need two of them to do the same thing, but I I can't say. And we, we support DNS uh, DNS setting through some uh, SUSE net config tool. Maybe many of, of you don't know what I'm talking about, but uh, I'm saying this because uh, because I want to show you that we actually do cooperate, that we don't don't uh, do only uh, Fedora and Red Hat, but we also cooperate with others. And Gen2 is quite a good uh, good test bed for just anything. And they have uh, they have some good ideas in the integration with their open RC service manager. So there are probably many things to borrow from, many things to think about. And that's done. What's new with uh, the current release is that you can build network manager just on any distribution. Because before that we had like uh, like support for specific distributions, and even if you didn't need f any like specific configuration for the distribution, you still had to add the name of the distribution to some list or something. So this is no longer needed. Uh, you can specifically enable or disable plugins, so it's much easier to work with. Uh, like uh, if if you want to help the other distribution people, it's much easier to have a build that that uh, is uh, similar to theirs. And I heard somewhere that every presentation needs some cat, so I had to do it also. <coughs> and now there's like five minutes or so for your questions. Yes. 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 That's my cat. Yeah, I want it to be original. Yes. Yeah, the question is about uh, the behavior of network manager uh, that after you change the configuration file, it immediately picks up the changes and commits them. And that it's pretty annoying. Yeah, I, I also think it's pretty annoying. <laughs> we were discussing it. We might even uh, want to change it, but we don't know yet. So it's, it's up to discussion. But uh, it, it certainly will not be changed during like uh, zero 09 branch because uh, this is the behavior that that uh, people actually use. So this is this is not possible to change just at any time. Uh, can Dan help me with that?
Thank you. Yes. Yes, we are talking uh, even with uh, some uh, some virtualization people and some some server people about the possibility of having some checkpoints for working configurations so that you can do something like uh, like uh, break your connection this way, wait a while that that uh, the system realizes that that there is a problem, and then get back the, the original configuration. But we did not like to include uh, this by default so this this might be part of some some virtualization solutions or it might be configurable or something it's it's uh, not yet done yes Thank you. Thank you. We are out of time, and uh, I see you're becoming to ask questions that I cannot answer and then <laughs> it's answering. So I think the best idea would be for, for those people who need more information to gather at the Fedora booth. Thank you very much. <laughs>